Good morning, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ. Good morning, Father. The month of October is dedicated to the, the Holy Rosary of the Blessed Mother and also for the missions of the Church, those who have been sent on foreign land, to foreign land to spread the Gospel of the Lord. And today we also celebrate, we are supposed to celebrate the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi, but because it is a Sunday, we celebrate the Sunday liturgy. But we take, but we take our inspiration from St. Francis and in a special way, we pray for peace, peace in our hearts, peace in our families, peace in our world. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, he will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In 1993, a farmer named Robert Latimer killed his severely handicapped, handicapped daughter named Tracy in one of the prairies in Canada. What did Robert Latimer, known as Bob, do? He put her into the family truck and then he hooked a tube to the exhaust pipe and put it inside the car, the other end inside the car, shut the windows and locked the door and let his daughter fall asleep until she died. And why did he do it? Robert says it is because he loved his daughter. In his mind, what he did was an act of mercy because he could no longer see his daughter suffer severely every day. And nobody, nobody doubted his sincerity because the daughter was almost totally disabled physically and mentally and lived in constant pain. And medically, doctors do not see any chance for her condition to get better not even lessening the pain that she daily goes through. And so Robert decided to end Tracy's life in the most humane way that he knew. Tracy's death became a huge national story in Canada, a long-drawn court battle that lasted for years, followed with 
followed, which eventually ended up in the Supreme Court of Canada. And the event, the event has also sparked a countrywide moral and religious debate that bitterly divided families and communities. And finally, in 2001, years after the event happened, Robert was convicted and imprisoned for second-degree murder. And after 10 years of imprisonment, he was eventually granted his freedom. The death of this young girl, Tracy, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, raises an issue that we do, cannot agree on up to this day. What really is the value of a human life, especially the life of a severely disabled person? And this question is very important for each one of us because without our knowing, each one of us is also disabled. We have the inability to live our lives and bear fruit that the Lord wants because of our weakness, because of our sinfulness. And us, us disabled people, the only consequence really is the rejection of the heavens, a rejection of God. But is that what really happens when we, come, when we talk about our God? Let us take a second look at today's scriptures for answers to this question. Today's first reading from the prophet Isaiah tells us the story of a friend who carefully prepared his land for a vineyard. He cleared the stones, built, built a watchtower, and planted the choicest vines. He even built a wine press so he could convert the grapes into wine. Unfortunately, the vineyard yielded bad grapes. The story ends with God telling the people of Jerusalem and of Judah that in very vivid language, he tells them that you are the vineyard and that he is going to destroy it and trample it down because they would not yield good fruit, because they would not let God's love grow among them. Our first reading seems to tell that the value of a disabled life of a reject is nothing, that the Lord is willing to destroy it if it does not bear good fruit. And we hear that many times in the scriptures. But maybe before we have that misconception, let us continue and look at today's gospel. In today's gospel, Jesus retells the story but changes the focus from the vineyard itself to the tenants of the land. In his version, Jesus says that the owner rents out his rich vineyard to tenants and was, as was the custom at the time, and he entrusts them with the task of raising choice grapes for him. And come harvest time, the landowner sends his servants to collect the produce, yet which, which must have been very abundant because the tenants dishonestly wanted to keep everything, even the land, even the vineyard, keep everything for themselves. So they beat or stoned or even killed the servants that the master sent. After many attempts, the owner decides to send his own son, thinking that the tenants will surely respect him. But let us think about that for a moment. If you were the tenant, would you have sent your only child to talk to, the, if you were the landowner, would you have sent your only child to talk to these tenants, knowing that these tenants might, could also kill your only child. Perhaps many of us say, no, I will protect my family. My family is more important than the produce of the land. It is more important than my share of the harvest. But is that the thinking of the landowner? The landowner sends his only child to talk to these tenants. 
Is it because the produce is more important than the life of his child? What is the value of the life of a reject? What is the value of the life of a disabled person like us? The answer, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, is this, that it is very valuable. It is worth everything to our Lord. If we continue reading the gospel, what did, what, what, what did his audience say? He says, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. But what is Jesus' response? He says, did you ever read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? By the, by the Lord has this been done and it is wonderful in our eyes. In other words, the Lord glorifies the rejected life and it is wonderful in our eyes. The Lord values the, the, life of the, the life of His rejected Son, but He also values not only the life of His rejected Son. Let us not forget to whom and why He sent His only Son. He sent His Son to redeem us disabled rejects. We are disabled because we are unable to bear good fruit in our lives because of sin. And because of sin, we ought to be rejected by God who is all holy. But what does He do? Does He reject us? Does He destroy us? He sends His only Son to redeem us even with the risk of rejection, even with the risk of death. And why does he do this, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ? Jesus is entirely willing to go and live among us disabled, sinful, and rejected people because he lives by compassion and rejection is only secondary. Danger is only secondary. His safety is only secondary. First and foremost is love and compassion for the rejected. For Jesus, more important than life is love, that it is worth giving up one's life for the sake of the love to which life has always yearned to go back to, the loving union of God and His creation. That is worth the life, that, that, that was worth His life for Jesus. And the story, this story continues to this day. The Lord of the vineyard continues to send messengers, emissaries, pleading us to bear good fruit, even if we continue to reject them over and over again. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, the great boxer Muhammad Ali once said, that service to others is the rent you pay for your room here on earth. Today, our scriptures remind us that the good creator and Lord has given us a room here on earth for a purpose. That we share in the task of caring and prospering the vineyard, his kingdom, and making sure that it bears good fruit. And what is our response? Taking our cue from St. Francis of Assisi, whose feast we celebrate today, the Lord of the Vineyard hopes that we, his tenants, will sow love where there is hatred, pardon where there is injury, faith where there is doubt, hope where there is despair, light where there is darkness, and joy where there is sadness. And when we do so, then we can hope that the vineyard of the Lord will bear good fruit. We can finally live in the joy, peace, and love for which our hearts have always longed for. Amen. And as usual, I will give you your assignment for the week. They say that rejection is a blessing. 
Rejection is a blessing because it's God's way of telling us that there is something better for us. So for your assignment, if you feel rejected in one way or another, just bring it to prayer and ask the Lord to show you how this rejection is a blessing, no? What, what, what is this better thing that the Lord is trying to point out to us? Because let us remember, we are all rejects. We are the heavens has rejected us, but God himself does not reject us. He continues to send emissaries, to send prophets, to send people, and every Sunday, his word, he reaches out to us in his word. And so we cannot consider, even if we are worthy of rejection, we are never rejected. God does not give up on us because God puts our, his hopes in us. God puts his hopes in us. He hopes for a better world, and that can only happen if we become good tenants. So the invitation is to accept that the rejection of the world and thank God you are rejected by the world because that means you do not live by the values and the standards of this world. And also ask the Lord to help you be a good tenant in this world by really sowing the seeds of the kingdom of God.